this is a uh, 2009 uh, YFM 700 Yamaha Grizzly. Extremely previously enjoyed. Um, pretty rough around the edges. Guy brought it to me. The steering was falling apart. Uh, you know, I needed wheel bearings. Uh, had a whole plethora of issues with it. Anyways, nonetheless, um, you know, the he had had it to another dealer. He put a bunch of hung a bunch of parts on it in the steering. It's really weird because the steering stem was actually stripped. So you turn the bars and the wheels wouldn't turn. So um, it's really strange that they replaced all the U-joints and not the U-joints, but the ball joints on the steering and and just ignored the fact that the bars weren't quite connected to the wheels anymore, which is kind of strange. But anyways, nonetheless, guy brought it in to me. Thought it was a power steering EPS unit, but it's it's not. It was a collar, and uh, it was all stripped out in there, so I placed the collar. So I'm just making a video, because as I was working on this, there was a bunch of other issues, wiring, then there was a bunch of codes on it. And I myself looked up the... Uh, some of the codes and then and then some YouTube stuff and I found that the, the information wasn't quite clear as usual so I got one in right now today and thought I would make a quick video about um, about how to check these things the first thing you should always check if you have problems with the with the uh, with the machine elect electrically is check the fuses this 40 amp was blowing it was for the EPS unit I couldn't get it to spit out codes and then after replacing the blowing 40 amp fuse it's this little green one here and you'll find those right down in there and there's two of them and then this there was a spare so anyways there's that check all the fuses for you start with anything and then when you're diagnosing this diagnosing these electrical issues you should always make sure that the battery is fully charged like it's good battery I put a brand new battery in this thing the other one was a little weak so if you have a weak battery and especially if you're cranking it it sucks so much juice from the battery that it doesn't leave a left uh, there's not a lot left over for all the other peripheral systems to work and sometimes that gets a little glitchy with uh, electronics and whatnot so make sure the battery's charged check all the fuses before you do anything and then and then make sure the battery connections are tight too because you wouldn't believe how many times I found that to be the case that the connections were just loose so anyways with respect to the um, uh, fuel diagnosis a lot, lot of a lot of kind of confusion like here's so the first thing you do before you engage in in this uh in checking for the um trying to get this thing to spit out the codes and what's wrong with it the first thing you should do is is, is disconnect this um fuel pump uh connection so th this is your your fuel level sender and it's also your fuel pump feed so you know it it, it it turns the motor and then it pumps fuel down to your injectors so you gotta disconnect this and the reason you disconnect it is because when you turn this on so when you turn it on there's there's a certain um commands in here that can make the fuel pump run and and what happens is if you, if you make the fuel pump run on one of these codes um it uh it can easily flood the cylinder and, and, and it'll flood it with gasoline and so so a couple things can happen with that a lot of it's funny a lot of people don't explain this stuff they say just never do this and you got to do that but they don't explain why that you have to disconnect that pump is because on on a certain one i think it's d50 or something on the code on the on the dash if 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 you set it for that the injector will start spraying and it'll actually fill up the cylinder full of fuel and it can wash down into the oil but also more importantly it can as as when next time you go to start it if it's full of fuel it'll do what's called hydro locking and and as the piston comes up if the valve's open it can actually bend the valve and, and cause cause you a lot of grief <laughs> pull the motor and that sort of stuff so so while you're holding it There we go. So into diagnostic mode. So, so you have to hold these two buttons. It's a, it's the select and the reset at the same time, and then as you're holding it, then you turn on the ignition. And then now that it says diag on it for diagnostics, you press this once more, and then it'll go into a uh, menu here. 
yeah there we go so d1 so the the first so you can flick through all these diagnoses so there's one three five six seven and they all do different things they all give you different information so the first one's your tps so as you push the throttle on you'll see it changes and it should be it should start out within the parameters of 15 to 20 and it goes all the way up to uh this one 94 and interestingly enough if you want to see if the tps sensor is faulty as you go up slowly through these see how it's counting 29 30 31 32 i won't go all the way to the top but you can slowly push the throttle and it'll start counting and if it misses a number um, you'll know that the real stat in the um, in the TPS sensor is faulty. It's a it's a it's a it's a circular winding, and a, and a little arm makes contact with it in the TPS sensor, and and sometimes they get a flat spot or a dead spot, and they don't read anymore, and it throws it out of whack. So make sure that's working. And then, anyways, the next ones, you know, there's some in here for the current air temperature, and then the coolant temperature, etc., etc. But the one that it's really most important that most ones people concern themselves about is D60 and that's the current codes on the machine and if there's any current codes then it'll spit out the numbers between like 1 and 70 something in there and oddly enough on the FGR say uh, 1300 it's the same Let's see if we can't get it to do that so yeah so you just select and reset you hold them down and you turn the key and it'll do actually the exact same thing on the FGR 1300 it'll come up see diagnostic and you press it again both of them hold it and then it'll go into the same thing I believe see and there's the there's the TPS and as you roll on the throttle it counts and then uh, and then you can um, you know, so you hear the fuel pump going. I haven't disconnected on this, so that's what I'm talking about. Be careful with that. Anyways, moving right along. Battery died, sorry. But anyways, so um, so that's the gist with that. And then the next one after 60 is, a, is the next most important one. And so you select up, and that's 61. And this will tell you your history of codes. And so it has a 22 on there. I'm not sure what that is. I'd have to look it up. But and I've been working a lot on this machine, so so it it throws some codes when you unplug something, then turn the key on. It senses it's not there. For instance, the air box. I had the air box off, and there's a little tab there for the for the uh, airflow sensor. Which, by the way, in there you should always, whenever you clean your filter, be careful of that because don't don't get it contaminated with uh, with uh, oily stuff or touch it or anything. It should be clean as clean as can be anyway so otherwise you'll throw weird codes so so 22 so that's the that's the gist of it so this is how you extract the codes from your yamaha grizzly now it doesn't always do throw it give you a code if something's wrong if the machine's not running right or what have you so and so that's that so hopefully that helped a few people out kind of muddle their way through <laughs> diagnosing their own machines and trying to save a few bucks and taking it into the, the dealership or whoever or maybe you know or near anybody any kind of help and and uh you know youtube is your savior so anyways um yeah it's good to pass on this knowledge i mean it's not very intu intuitive you know that it's not you're not born with this knowledge obviously so it's good to pass it along from harder experience and the other thing i'm doing another video on the next one how to pull the codes for the eps which is quite a bit different on the same machine and um that power steering is used on yamaha apex skidoos as well as long as well as a few others i'm not familiar with skidoos but i know they use them on the skidoos and, and they do flake out they get overtaxed and, and overburdened quite readily because i think the system's a little bit on the chintzy side so um so catch out the next video if you're looking for uh info on the eps and how to diagnose it and diagnose it and all the problems associated with it and where all the components are and etc etc anyways thanks for watching and uh talk to you later bye bye